Hello, so here I am uh, with a new project. This is a little top-down game which is kind of a hybrid of tower defence and lemmings, I think might be the best way to describe it. It's a work in progress in very broad terms, so this all may change, it may be rubbish, I may give up, um, but I just quite fancy doing this. Um, so I'm just going to briefly go through the way I've approached this, which may be a terrible way, um, and later on I might go through some more specific stuff. So the first question when you're doing this sort of thing is to think what is the best way to start, because um, you've got a few templates you can start with. Now I wanted this to be a top-down view um, with originally sort of WASD control rather than mouse clicking and I mentioned that because if you select the top-down template it's got this um, not quite top-down sort of angle camera view um, and it's click to move and I didn't really want that I wanted controls a bit more like the third person project but I didn't want that kind of view so I wasn't sure I made the right decision but <coughs> I went with top down and I was thinking about going with the C++ version. Sorry, that's my cat. She's now getting completely in the way. I'm choking on the hair. <coughs> um, but I thought I'll stick with Blueprint. It's, uh, it does what I need. I've not yet found something I can't do with Blueprints. Um, performance may be an issue, but not yet. My cat is now being super annoying. So I... Oh, please go away. I... Um, let's throw you away. I start of the top down project, which this is a modified version of. There is normally just a big box for the ground and I've changed that for reasons that will become clearer. So the default behaviour um, of, the th of the top down project is you click and the character moves. Oh, there's stuff going on. Ignore that for now. Um, and uh, that's okay but it did things I didn't like. If you move the cursor onto walls, they would get the cursor too. But here, I've changed the behavior so that you can only move to places when you're aiming the cursor at the floor. And I've got a spawn point here, and I've done a different thing here, which is when the cursor's on that, you get a sort of an icon. Um, I haven't quite finished it. When you click on it, it sort of activates. Um, at the moment it's quite a simple layout just to get the pathing. Um, yeah, but if you move the cursor anywhere other than that, well it'll move because I haven't yet updated the movement. But in terms of the cursor display, that's all working. So what am I doing here? Um, I wanted to get this right from the beginning to avoid having to do too many redos uh, and use child classes in a hopefully sensible way. So. I've defined a blueprint type which is a game object and if I just open this up this has some basic stuff in it it's got a okay everything's invisible at the moment um, it's got a static mesh you can use which is uh, nothing by default and an icon you can have which isn't nothing but it's hidden by default and what we're going to look at here is the constructor so you can specify the icon you want to have so different game objects have different icons so the spawner had that sort of door with the arrow coming out of it and um, well that's it so far um, and I've got a curve for the activation which is why this is here which affects the size of that icon. That's uh, I haven't can't show you that yet. Um, and then the visibility is set according to whether or not it's highlighted, and by default it's not. It does a few things in here. There's an event to start the highlight, which displays that icon. There's an event to stop the highlight, which hides the icon. And there's a whole bit to activate it. Now I can demo that if I. Um, just add the activated thing to the end of the highlight. Let's just go. Um, oh yeah, the camera angles will come to in a second. So now that will simulate the 
activation. So just a little doink. And that's following a curve. So it doesn't need a curve, but here it is. It's just a doink in and out to the scale of 1. So the scale dips down to 0 0.7 something and back up again. Um, this can all be tweaked. That's one of the advantages of doing it in a curve. You can change the time length. Um, so all I need to do is to add the thing that when you click on it, it will call that event. Um, camera angles. So this is the default top-down view. I've mapped it so that mouse wheel up and down will switch between this view and a standard top-down view. And what I've done here is um, I've changed... Now, if I can remember where I changed it... Uh, doo -doo -doo. I think... So this is the top-down character blueprint, which is the standard um, setup for the top-down view. Let's just zoom in a little bit here. So I haven't changed any of this, that's how it comes out of the box. Uh, but I've messed about with the events. So I've more or less given up on the VR stuff. I don't have VR, I can't test it, so I'm not going to worry about it. Um, I've hived off things into the setup cameras uh, thing, which basically does a bit of preliminary work to find a target plane. The target plane is uh, this. It's hidden at the moment. Let me just make it a bit bigger. Um, oh, that's fine. So it's actually just a straight plane sitting under everything. And eventually what I wanted to do is to have the top-down camera automatically calculate the depth of field and maybe the height so that everything is in the screen so it fits perfectly to the screen. Um, for, the now I'm, for now I'm cludging it. Uh, so what I do is I find I make sure there's one of those planes. If not I complain. I find um, the bounds of it, the center and the extent, and I save those off. And um, I work out a view height for the camera, which is a certain amount, uh, in this case 10,000 units above that plane, uh, and I spawn a camera. Now here, no, so that's the location, the rotation is just straight down, pointing straight down with a pitch of 270. Um, and I said a few things so it doesn't follow the character around, which is what I want, um, because the default camera does follow the character around, this one just is locked in place. There's probably a better way to do that. So here's the field of view when it's zoomed out, and that's something I need to calculate, but for now I've just got a value that works for that particular level. Then I activate the cameras, um, either the VR or the over-the-shoulder one or the top-down camera, depending on whether it's zoomed in or not and whether you've got the VR stuff going on, uh, and then set the field of view of the other camera. Um, nothing crazy there. Um, but that gives that toggleable character, that toggleable camera. Now it can blend between the uh, camera. Uh, where's the camera? So it can blend between, let's say, set camera. So when I set the camera, which is called by the um, mouse up, mouse down thing. So the zoom in just sets the value and then call set camera, nothing fancy there. Um, let's just stop that. Checks whether it's VR um, and then it sets goes to one of the two cameras. I'm ignoring the VR stuff for now. The blend time, if we set, set that to something to like 1, which is a bit slow, it does this. I haven't yet found a way to stop it doing that horrible zooming too far and then zooming back in because that's not quite how I'd like to blend it and that is partly due to the field of view and the distance so if I tweak that a bit but I have to get the camera quite far away from the level to squish the perspective a bit otherwise you see more of the wall there and you 
you block things that are there and it's you know there's a little bit of that I could use an orthogonal camera but to be honest that just plain didn't work for me um, but yeah so there's something to work on there I could maybe somehow get that blend better uh, or maybe just manually blend it um, but for now I'm going to turn that back off um, right and this is my first foray into AI um, now you saw them in motion these little things are going to spawn them and you can just set these various properties there's nothing fancy there this spawn variance um, isn't a classical variance it's just a cludge would you be almost surprised to hear um, so let me find that blueprint um, so this is a this is going to be a mesh um, but for now it's just a cube um, this is just a billboard showing where the spawn point will be and the position of this is then used to actually spawn things and there is the highlighted icon which is hidden by default though I think I maybe wanted a bit more over there um, and I'm trying to remember why okay I don't set the visibility there for some reason this is a temporary sort of thing um, basically very crudely and I'm going to have to change this uh, for reasons I'll explain it waits for a initial time and then after a sec a it decrements the counter, stalls the new version spawns somebody new, works out a delay for the next one and then delays before going back to the beginning the delay uses a bit of this stuff to get the variance so a maximum variance will so you have a, a basic t time delay of let's say three seconds a variance of naught means that it's three seconds every time a maximum variance means it's between zero and six seconds so you should never have it one because you'll get multiple things that, you know but um, higher variances have more uneven spawning um, and when I spawn the survivor I have this um, property set for the spawner which tells you where they're going to be heading towards where the exit is um, just a bit of housekeeping and so the spawn point which is that billboard uh, which is placed manually that's used to um, tell it where to spawn people then you get the AI controller and tell it that the target is what the target is the character is given the information about the destination as well this is probably sloppy um, and I think that's that's pretty much it so the spawning process is quite simple I'm going to modify it so that you can click on these before it started spawning or after it's spawning to immediately spawn so if you click on it before it started at all it will then start as normal if you click on it again it might just dis dispense another person until the number of people has gone the success uh, is determined by how many get through is it you know above a certain percentage which is defined according to the map now um, so these AI spawns I have made some AI stuff for the first time this is a copy of the character blueprint that comes with the top-down model so it's just the basic animation and mesh that's used for the main character I will change that in due course um, other bits you need for AI you need the AI controller and this if I find it um, this doesn't have much in it at the moment this uh, when play begins it basically sets up the blackboard says use this blackboard which is the one associated with that asset and then run the behavior tree and there's a little bit to set the destination which is called by the one we've already seen um, so there's not much in here at the moment but that is one of the elements you need for AI um, so the character, the controller then you've got the blackboard and the behavior tree and the blackboard which I don't claim to fully understand yet um, just has the sort of the data that it needs which is the current target location where the character is going to and the exit location and those two may well be the same and currently they are um, so that's the blackboard 
and then the behavior tree I completely am not on top of but this is what I've got so far where you choose left or right until something works or doesn't work so the first thing you do is look at the blackboard is the target location set if it is then go down a level are you at the exit location if so you've reached the exit well done that will then kill off the character if you've got a target location but you're not there um, are you at the target location as opposed to the exit location if you've got an intermediate point if you are then find a new target otherwise just keep moving to the target location if there is no target location set either it checks is there an exit location set this could be done in the blueprint I'm pretty sure maybe even Nisa to do that way but this is how I've done it so far if there isn't an exit target location because that branch has failed to execute but there isn't an exit location um, just run the code to fill in the next target which will then be the exit location in the current iteration and otherwise just wait do nothing um, but this could have some idle animation or it could have some other criteria to determine a new target um, and put that all together and uh, okay and so the, the tree calls little bits of blueprint code to do things that aren't built into the behavior tree so the find new target and the reached exit the find new target um, it just basically uh, gets the blackboard, gets the exit location and stores that in the target location. That will need to be changed because one of the things you can drop as the player is a beacon to make players run towards it. Um, the basic gist is there's different AI types and hostile AI types. Um, they'll behave in different ways and the, the maps will be a bit bigger. Um, and the idea is to put down things that block the way, things that attract AI, things that attract players, um, to try and get the AI to avoid the players. So some AI will attack other AI, so the trick is to get the AI to meet before they meet the players. You know, This may be a very simple gameplay, or it might have some complexity to it. I haven't quite worked it all out, but that's where I'm going with that. So the player will move around adjusting things before the time starts, and then while that's going on, can still adjust a few things. Um, forgot what I was going to say. So yeah, the AI spawn, they make their way using the um, nav mesh, just the screen stuff, to the exit. So you say, if you spawn there and you say your lo your destination is there, that's all you have to do. They will path find their way to there. It gets trickier if you dynamically change the path, which is possible. The tricky thing is to do it in such a way that doesn't slow down everything. Um, I'll have to add, add checks for the hostiles to find the friendlies and for the friendlies to avoid the AI and also to do a bit better crowd control, um, which I think is going to be a world of pain. Um, but yeah, so spawn it, set the destination, they make their way to it and then they die. So here's just watching how it goes. Um, they spawn slightly randomly, make their way using the nav mesh, get to the end and despawn. And that is the basic core mechanic of the game in place now. Um, it can be refined, change the way they move, change the way they choose targets and do more animation, though top down doesn't have to be brilliant. Um, uh, and that's basically there. Um, one other thing is that the floor pieces are just meshes and they depend from that game object so that um, you can place things on them like walls, you can move on them which makes the cursor appear but you can't activate them so there's no icon appears. Um, if I was to change that around you can't move but you can activate it would work like this the cursor would not work on that particular one but that icon appears which is not set up properly so you can very quickly make things that are interactable in various ways um, let's just reset that um, yeah and I was beginning to think about having some hidden sort of navigation points uh, I don't want to undo the way that the nav mesh works currently but I did want to have it so that you could have sort of waypoints and um, help define which way they run by preference but maybe I'll change it to change the weighting of the nav mesh and uh, there's a lot of stuff I haven't looked into properly. Um, there we go, that's just a quick little um, show of a new project which I may or may not do stuff on. Okay, bye.